And we are recording now. Hello, my name is Trevor Stephenson, and this is my friend here is Travis Hill. We are presenting our analysis on Coca Cola Company. Our agenda here we are uh, going to talk about the history and, and the mission statement. We're going to talk about how Coca-Cola is doing business and the overall industry that they are in, how their competitors are, are interacting with them, and what sort of strategies that Coca-Cola is initiating to overcome some of those difficulties with their competitors. We'll also talk about what sort of um, capabilities that they have, the, the ability for them to overcome the current issues, and what kind of uh, results that they're coming up with. And, and then overall, we're going to tell you what our recommendation is towards this company. So to start off, Coca-Cola's history, it started with John Stith Pemberton. He was a physician. He worked a lot with uh, herbs and, and created medicines for people. He created a wine called Pemberton's French Wine Coca. And because of uh, a prohibition in Georgia, he had to turn this wine into a non-alcoholic beverage, which turned into the original recipe for the Coca-Cola beverage. John, um, as he was nearing the end of his life, sold his interest in the Coca-Cola company to a guy named Asa Candler, who then really took off with Coca-Cola. As a was a, a great business person. He really knew what he was doing and he uh, made a great investment into Coca-Cola and, and really made it grow over the next few uh, years that he was managing it. Um, after uh, Asa Candler was um, out of office, I guess you could say, Coca-Cola was taken over by a group of investors and they bought the company for $25 million in the early 1900s and the company just continued to expand from there going into several other different countries uh, using millions of dollars in advertising budget and also using personalities such as uh, sports stars and opera singers to really promote their drink. The mission statement for Coca-Cola is refresh the world in mind, body, and spirit to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brands and actions to create value and make a difference. And we really think that they have made a great impact on, on the world and really they try to sell themselves as something that you drink to to celebrate life. Um, another thing about Coca-Cola, their brand, their logo, uh, is one of the top four most memorable logos in the entire world. So Coca-Cola's business model, they have always been a franchise distribution system. What this means is they franchise their bottlers so that other companies will bottle the, the syrup and mix it with, with the water that it needs to become to become a beverage. And they've been doing this ever since the beginning when John Stith Pemberton sold syrup to local drugstores in Atlanta. And the majority of the, the revenue for Coca-Cola comes from the sales of the syrup to all the bottlers worldwide. Um, this is quite a wonderful system because Coca-Cola only has to worry about creating the syrup and the rest of it, it lays on all the franchise bottlers and distributors. They're, they have a new marketing campaign that came out in 2016 called Taste the Feeling. This marketing campaign is to really bring together all the different brands of Coca-Cola and, and create a, a one brand feel so that people will recognize, oh hey, Sprite is Coca-Cola, Diet Coke is Coca-Cola, it's all the same company and it's all going to help us uh, celebrate those special moments in life. And 
really that's that's what they're trying to market and they're using the the hashtag taste the feeling so that you can see how other people are using coke beverages in their own day-to-day -day lives so the industry the non-alcoholic beverage industry uh, consists of many different competitors coca-cola being the primary and largest competitor and the other two competitors that compete against coca-cola are pepsico and the dr pepper snapple group each of these groups uh, have a percentage of the market share with coca-cola taking nearly half of the market share pepsico is taking nearly a fifth and dr pepper snapple group is just barely under a fifth um, all these companies they do create carbonated soft drinks fruit beverages uh, sports drinks, all, all of the drinks that you can think that are non-alcoholic. And even some of these companies make uh, snacks and other stuff and have diversified it into other areas besides uh, non-alcoholic beverages. In this industry, bottlers are completely in charge of distribution. So the syrup gets produced by the companies, gets shipped to the bottlers, the bottlers then distribute to the supermarkets and the, the gas stations, the restaurants, and the syrup then gets transformed into what we drink, the consumer drinks. The soda industry is completely reliant on price. It is price elastic and income elastic, meaning that if the price goes up, people are going to not drink as much. And if people's income goes down, they are not going to drink as much. So we, we really want to keep a low price and we really want to make sure that people get good incomes in order to do well in this industry. All right. There are actually quite a, a significant in, um, social issue impacting this industry, and that's the fact of uh, the social health um, consciousness that people have with sugar creating obesity. Um, because of this negative connotation that soft drinks are very sugar uh, loaded, a lot of people are moving away from using carbonated soda and drinking more water and, and more healthier options that are low calorie or no calorie options. Um, another issue that came out, out was advertising to children. Uh, somebody in the government decided that we shouldn't advertise soda to children because that's not healthy. And so now the entire industry as a whole has agreed to not advertise to children and to not advertise soda drinks to children, but to advertise healthy drinks to children. Uh, which leads us into the declining and stagnant industry where people just really aren't drinking as much soda as they used to. It's not as appealing to the world population as it once was. So here we have the Porter's five forces analysis. We have our suppliers on the top. Our suppliers in the industry really have low power. Um, it's, it's really, the companies really control most of the industry, uh, companies being Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, and Snapple Group. Um, on the other spectrum, buyers also have low power. Um, there's few bottlers, low, low backward integration, and the cost of product is really low, which keeps out the, which gives Coca-Cola the majority of the power vertically. Horizontally, the potential for new entrants is low. It, it takes a lot of capital to get into the market and retaliation is imminent, meaning that if you come into the market, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, they're gonna attack you and they're gonna try and drive you out. Um, but this, the threat of substitutes is, is very high. You, you have Coca-Cola and PepsiCo, they're constantly battling it out. And so there's a, a lot of competition within the industry itself. Um, just because there's a, a low diversity of competitors 
and there's low product differentiation. There, there really isn't much more you can do with a drink than, than have uh, the options that we have now. And I actually think I can take over from here, Trevor, if you're okay with that. Yeah, totally. Sounds good. If you just want to go ahead and share the uh, PowerPoint there, and then we can. Yeah. Um, actually, still the presenter. This is not working for me. Let me go ahead and share it again and we can do it that way. Okay. I think we got the technical difficulties figured out. New new program, so we were <laughs> learning. Um, so the industry that uh, Coca Cola competes in is a largely monopolistic competitive environment, meaning that there are a few major competitors, as we mentioned, Coke, Pepsi, Dr Pepper. They kind of dominate the industry, um, and then you have quite a few competitors that have very little market share on the other end, uh, but but they're not major players. The so so essentially, you're working with three majors. Um, the first being uh, behind Coca-Cola, obviously, is is PepsiCo. Um, they have assets worth uh, sixty nine point six six seven billion in the U.S. Um, and two hundred and sixty three thousand employees worldwide. Um, so when we kind of break down the strength strengths and weaknesses of PepsiCo, we see that they have a, a huge brand image. Um, and so, you know, everyone recognizes the, the iconic Pepsi um, icon. Um, they also have a broad product mix. So they've actually diversified outside of their beverages into the food industry. They, they own um, Frito-Lay. Um, and so they've kind of diversified that way, allowing them to have a, a broad product range. Um, and they also have immense resources at their disposal. Uh, but some of the weaknesses that they carry uh, compared with Coca-Cola is that they're actually pretty unestablished outside of North America. You you might run into Pepsi here and there, but largely once once you leave North America, you're you're looking at Coke in most restaurants and and um, stores. Uh, next up, we have the Dr Pepper Snapple Group as a competitor. Um, they do have strong market position, as we've mentioned, and also a strong product line. They have Dr. Pepper, they have Snapple, um, they own a lot of uh, bottled water companies as well. Um, but where they lack is that their distribution change, uh, chain is unestablished. In fact, um, a lot of their distribution is done by Coke and PepsiCo. So um, they lack in that area. And once again, similar to Pepsi, they're unestablished outside of no North America, which is also an issue for them. Um, so some strategies um, that Coca-Cola has adopted uh, or should adopt in order to, um, you know, assist in in expanding is uh, becoming a consumer centric brand. So uh, they're focused, as Trevor mentioned earlier, on the unified Coca-Cola pitcher. So when you see any of Coke's products, you understand who the overall brand is and, and where that's coming from. Um, they also diversify their strategy based on local traditions and interests. So depending on uh, which location they're, they're selling their product, they uh, work to basically ad adopt local traditions and kind of appeal to the people in that market um, in order to sell more product. Um, finally, they work with uh, cooperative agreements. Um, so essentially, they, they do branding through um, sports teams and, and things like that in order to further market their product. So these are kind of the some of the main strategies that Coca-Cola has adopted to um, expand their brand. Um, I think one of the biggest ones that have been beneficial to them is uh, diversifying their strategy. 
uh, based on the local traditions and interests. So one thing that you'll see common here in the United States is the um, the polar bear commercials around Christmas time, um, and that was one of the the things that Coca Cola did to to kind of appeal to people here in North America. So some of the resources and capabilities that Coca Cola has um, at their disposal is. Um, commercial leadership, franchise leadership, and bottling and distribution. Um, their largest of those resources is their bottling and distribution. They have a, an immense distribution system that helps them you know, carry their products all across the world um, and do so pretty quickly. And so that's probably their biggest resource that's at their disposal. Dis yeah, disposal. Uh, capabilities uh, that they carry are consumer marketing, uh, manufacturing, strategic management, and financial management. Um, Coca-Cola is obviously big into marketing. Um, they spend a lot of money marketing and uh, they make a lot of money as a result. Uh, they also own a lot of manufacturing plants. Um, and more importantly, their strategic ma management has been one of their most valuable capabilities. Um, even uh, as the market is kind of um, started to decline or stagnate a little bit. Uh, their their organization has been able to make money uh, consecutively, even while the um, industry as a whole has been on the decline. In fact, for about eleven consecutive years, um, non carbonated soda uh, beverage sales have been on the decline. But Coke has still been able to post a profit in most all of those years. So some of the biggest current issues that Coca-Cola is facing, um, obviously health conscious c consumers, as Trevor mentioned, mentioned previously, um, water quality and quantity, um, evolving customer preferences, which also relates with the health conscious customers as, as um, consumers are becoming more health conscious, their preferences are changing as well, leading them to purchase more bottled water, purchase juice, um, kind of uh, more healthier alternatives. Uh, they also have quite a bit of competition, um, as we mentioned, and this competition uh, from Pepsi and Snapple is the biggest, but also from these other smaller competitors b because of the uh, elasticity of the market. If um, if they start charging too much on one end, it's pretty easy to find a substitute um, that at least is close to the same taste as Coca-Cola. Um, and so they do face a lot of competition in the market. Um, product safety and quality, food security, and as we mentioned, stagnant and declining industry, which is probably going to be the biggest one impacting Coca-Cola if they're not careful. Um, so to uh, non-carbonated beverages sales continue to to drop each year. So. so the key results that were gathered during our analysis here is that you know overall Coca-Cola is an attract att an attractive investment. Um, they have a lot of the market share, almost fifty percent. They have resources and capabilities, so there wouldn't be a huge investment in those if they were acquired. And obviously, the brand image, um, Coke is world renowned brand, so. Uh, that makes it appealing. Um, however, there are some concerns. Um, the first being diversification. Uh, Coke is really good at um, <clears throat> non-carbonated beverages um, outside of water. Um, so that's going to be a major concern for them. You have companies like PepsiCo who have bought, um, you know, Frito Lay and even Quaker. Um, and so they're diversifying into the food market. You have uh, Snapple, who, uh, Dr. Pepper, and Snapple, who have invested heavily in bottled water, um, which is you know stealing some of the market share from soda, obviously. And Coca Cola hasn't really uh, branched outside of their you know their standard Coca Cola, Sprite, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, that kind of thing. Um, so diver diversification could be an issue. Um, and obviously, as we've mentioned several times, a stagnant and declining industry could also impact. So, um, so some recommendations for Coca-Cola um, or anyone who would acquire them post-acquisition. Um, they need to take more advantage of their distribution channels. Um, so they have this immense distribution channel at their disposal disposal, and it would be in their best interest to use that. Um, so 
basically they should look into uh, diversifying into maybe some food products and also especially into bottled water and use that distribution channel that's already in place to uh, get those goods out. Uh, it wouldn't require much additional investments in resources and capabilities and it would allow them to kind of tap into a new market um, that they they could be a major player in. Um, also, to that point, they shouldn't be leaving all their eggs in one basket. So if they were to di diversify into bottled water or food groups, um, they would you know, increase their growth, reduce risk as the market is declining, and actually create some value for themselves. Um, finally, they should use their brand image to combat negative press on the industry. Uh, so as we kind of talked about earlier, um, there's a kind of a, a broad a, a uh, opinion that you know soda is immensely bad for you because of the sugar that's added in there and and coca-cola has the brand image to um to combat that and use that to their advantage um, they can can uh, participate in csr uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives that would make the brand more appealing outside of the uh, negative connotations around their their sugar uh, in their soda so those would be the recommendations that we would have for coca-cola um, or anyone who acquired them. Uh, so that's the end of the information here. Um, Trevor, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Uh, you know, Coca-Cola is my favorite uh, company in the entire world. I, I love it, I drink it, and I don't think I'll ever stop anytime soon. Alrighty, well thank you for taking the time to listen to this, and uh, we appreciate your feedback.